Okay, now we're going to do some examples using our log properties. So the reason we have properties is so that we can find values, we can evaluate things. These are just expressions, so we're not solving. That comes in the next section, but um, this is just evaluating and finding the value. And we want to simplify it down enough where we're not going to have logs in this specifically um, in this these types of problems. So keep that in mind. When you're doing quizzes and homework and things, it should match kind of the same process as your examples. So I should see work. I shouldn't just see a number plopped up there. I should see the steps and the properties that you used. Okay. So first property that we're going to use is um, our, it's kind of the reverse of how we built it, our uh, sum to product property you could think of it as. So this all equals log base six that stays the same. You can only do this if they have the same base, just like for exponent laws. And we are going to write this as nine times four. Now we can write this as log base six of 36. which is equal to log base six of six squared. And now we know that these in essence become one. So log base six of six is it just leaves us with the exponent. So that is going to equal two. Now the same thing we can do with the quotient rule um, here, but we have one thing to consider first. We have this um, coefficient there. So we have log base eight of 16 minus two log base eight of two. So the first thing you need to do is use that property where the exponent will go back up. So we're reversing, let's just look at this one. Um, instead of going from left to right here on this one, we're just doing it in the um, kind of opposite way. Because all of these are equivalencies, you could do them as the vice versa. Okay, so we have a number in front, that means it can become the exponent there. So this will become log base 8 of 16 minus log base eight of two squared. Now again, um, we're gonna use the quotient property right over here. And we're going in the opposite direction than how we did the proof. And we have log base eight of 16 over two squared, which is four. Okay, we have to have like bases. Now we're going to simplify what's inside the parentheses here to just be four. Then we can write it as log base instead of eight. I'm going to write that as two cubed. And instead of four, I'm going to write two squared. Okay, so we had a property a little while back in the intro that we would take the um, exponent here. So that's going to equal two thirds. And you could do that out the long way if you wanted to. You could think, you know, eight to the one third squared equals two squared. Um, or you, you could go back to that intro and if you want to um, and kind of see how those work out the long way. But this is the property, I'll just write it here. Log base B of, we'll call it A, um, or to the A. And then if we have the same base to the, well maybe we should call that M, I think we used before, M. And then n, that equals n over m. 
Okay, so that was a property we learned before. Okay, now this one's a little bit tricky. Sometimes people aren't sure what to do with it. You have two um, logs multiplied together, but you have different bases here. So we can try to manipulate this. We can look at this one as being a um, coefficient, and we can use the property where we bring that up as an exponent. So we would write this as log base two of six, and then this is gonna be our exponent log base six of four. And that works out nicely because I have this situation here. So I'm gonna manipulate a little further here. Um, I can see here six to the log base six will just leave me with the four. So now I have log base two of four. I can rewrite the four as two squared. And then that just leaves me with a two. So that's a nice one that works out well. Okay, this one's a little bit different, but I think you can still do it as a classwork. You can at least try to do this piece here. Simplify that piece using that um, quotient property there and then see what it looks like and if you can use one of those properties from the from the intro okay so this one's pretty nice we can write this log base three of five minus log base three of four as log base three of five over four just leave it as an improper fraction. Um, don't try to simplify yet. Only if we need to will we do that. And then here we have 3 to the log base 3. So that will just leave us with the 5 fourths. Which is really nice. So that property was log... Um, actually, let's write it like this. If we have b to the log base b of, you know, like m, then that just equals m. So you can kind of think of those go out. Now this one's a little bit different because we have a natural log situation here. We also have this written as ln nine over two, which looks a little funny. So how I'm, I'm gonna deal with that is I'm gonna rewrite it so that it's a clear coefficient there. I have half times ln nine. Okay, natural log of nine. So then I'm going to use the property where this coefficient can become the exponent on the um, result there. So then I'm going to now re rewrite this as e to the ln 9 to the 1 half. And 9 to the 1 half just means square root, right? So this will be really, that's like the square root of 9, which is 3. So then I have e to the ln of 3, and then e to the ln, that's a natural log, they're inverses, so I'm just left with 3. And that's your answer for that one. So remember, we're just evaluating expressions. We're not solving out for any variable. We don't have any variables involved now. Um, the next page that we're going to work on we actually do have some unknowns involved but we're not going to solve for them yet because we only have one side of it what we're doing is we're just trying to simplify just like when you first started learning um, how to solve equations you would need to know how to simplify first simplify expressions because you have to simplify the expression on the left hand side simplify the expression on the right hand side and then you could solve. 
So with logs, same kind of thing. We're going to look at how do we simplify first? How do we deal with these things? And so we're going to learn how to manipulate kind of going back and forth. Um, and I'm going to pause this or stop this video. This will be um, part two. And then I'm going to make one more part, which will be part three on simplifying. And we're going to work on um, kind of stretching out. We're going to compress and expand um, and so we can get it into any format that we need in order to solve later. So have a great day.